just some some top line information on how to test if a product is done. We talked a little bit about E. coli in the beginning and 0157H7 being an adulterant or being illegal in that product. To make sure that, that you do process it to a temperature that would kill it if it were present. Ground beef is a hard thing to understand because you don't just want to go by color. So they, they recommend to put it up in a big mound and then stick the thermometer in the, in the mountain of, of ground beef. And again, we talked about the mesophilic range of microorganisms and the temperature that they like to grow in, and that's the, that's the pathogen range concern. And again, it's the 135 or 140 temperature to keep it above for hot holding, and then the 40 degrees uh, for less. They, they call that the danger zone. Going back to what I said earlier, the, the Food and Drug Administration has the 2005 model food code, and a lot of states have adopted that as law. So a lot of the regulations that are in that, um, specifically about cooking product and cooling product and holding product and labeling it in a, in a food service atmosphere, um, has to be abided by or the kitchen will receive a fine. Consumer expectations, we touched on that a little bit at the beginning. Um, when you're manufacturing a product or when you're looking at recipe development or if you're receiving a product in that you need to cook as a chef to serve, you want to understand who is responsible for that. What do those cooking preps say? What does that mean to me? And again, the stuff at the bottom is the canning process, obviously. Everything out of a can has been processed thoroughly. and the little person cooking down at the bottom <laughs> is responsible. Just touch a little bit on food safety labeling. So the government direction is looking at what does it mean um, for the consumer to understand ready to eat or not ready to eat. So if you look at a, a frozen entree like the banquet pot pies or a chicken kiev product that has already been battered and breaded and a little bit browned, but is not thoroughly cooked, that chicken inside of it is raw. If you look at the outbreaks that we've had linked to those particular products, there's been about eight or nine of them in the last 10 years. So the government, both the United States Department of Agriculture, who oversees meat products, and the Food and Drug Administration, who oversees non-meat-based products, are looking at what does that mean from a consumer perspective so that we don't sell anything as manufacturers or put anything out there on a salad bar that the consumers assume is already ready to eat when in fact it would need to be processed further. These are the big eight of the allergens. Every manufacturing facility is required to have a control program around them. How the product is labeled, how the ingredients received in or labeled, how you store that particular product in your facility. And I have coconut debatable on the bottom. It's debatable still here in the United States. I believe Canada and the European Union have already adopted coconut as an allergen. Some of the labeling that you might see, especially on like a candy bar, is processed on a line made with. Eventually, the industry sees that type of labeling going away and they might not allow that type of labeling because it is kind of a, a cop-out as to, well, you're not cleaning that all the way or it's processed on the line here with peanuts and this one over here doesn't have peanuts, but there could be some commingling. So we don't know what the government will do on that quite yet, but for now you'll still see labeling like that, especially on candy. That's where we see it the most. I, I buzzed through that relatively quickly. I hope there wasn't a whole lot of questions besides the ones that were asked. Several slices of pizza have been left out overnight. Is the pizza still safe to eat? Oh, no. sure. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> Obviously, they shouldn't be left out for longer than two hours because microorganisms, if in a good environment to survive, which a pizza it has the nutrients and the water to survive, they can multiply every, or double every 20 minutes. So they call that logarithmic growth, and they'll, it'll get huge. Think about a little tiny spot of mold. Once you see mold, that's over a million cells. 
once you see it. Cold pizza is the best. <laughs> Cold is good. Put it in the refrigerator. But don't leave it on your counter. I will be attending a tailgate party at the stadium and enjoying hamburgers. How can I be sure that they are fully cooked? Stab it. They're not going to bark like a noise. It's okay. <laughs> Did I hear a thermometer out of the chair? It's not bleeding. If it doesn't move, you're okay, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep, a thermometer. You definitely want to use a thermometer. Our dorm has a kitchen with a microwave on each floor. When I microwave the food according to the package's instructions, it's still partly frozen. Why doesn't it get hot enough? It's not thawed. Maybe it was supposed to be thawed. Maybe the packaging said that. Any other ideas? Not all microwaves are the same. Right, not all microwaves are the same. They talk about the power supply, whether or not the outlet is maxed to capacity with hair dryers or anything else that we have plugged in, TVs, Xbox, whatever it may be. And also, the, they, there is, they say that the microwaves can re reduce in their wattage output throughout the years or over the years. They also talk about extension cords, which I'm not familiar <coughs> with electrical engineering, but it's probably true. Obviously, you're going to do what if it's still frozen? Cook it more. Cook it more. Right. I frequently send care packages to my son at college. What other, what other foods besides cookies, crackers, and candy can I mail to him? You can't mail for one. Twinkies. <laughs> well, that's probably true. <laughs> right. I did pull these off the internet, so that's probably true. From a non-perishable perspective, what other food could be a source? Beef or a jerky. beef jerky? Yeah. Spam. Yep, canned goods, spam. Yep, I heard. <laughs> Usually they have longer shelf lives if it's a non-perishable item or a frozen item than refrigerated. My daughter's college is only a four hour drive, so she comes home often. How can I safely pack leftovers for her to take back to school? Cooler. In a cooler. And of course, this is gonna be a little bit more specific. They're gonna talk about making sure that it gets cool fast and keeping it in smaller containers and spreading it out and then making sure there's ice all the way around the particular product. <coughs> The USDA has a hotline in conjunction with the Food Safety Educators Fight Back program. And they have a lot of really good tips out there on their website. A lot of them are just like clean, separate, cook, and chill. So some very basic guidelines. There are some interactive games on that website if you're ever interested in playing them. They are actually tailored towards elementary schoolers, so I don't think you'd probably go out and play them, but maybe in the future. So that was a quick half hour that walked through ingredients, processing, final products, sanitation, some food safety tips, and a little bit about labeling. Uh. Any questions?